This video will give a quick rundown of how vectors work in R2 and R3. This may be a review for some of you, but it also may be new for others. Um, so we'll see how it goes. We'll start with just R2 here. R2 is also called the plane. The idea is you have your X, Y axis. This provides two dimensions of movement. You can move left and right along the x-axis, or you can move up and down along the y-axis. That's why the dimension is two there. Now, what are we talking about here? When we talk about vectors in R2, what we mean is we mean some sort of an arrow with a starting point here. Now we will usually write down vectors using these diagonal uh, brackets here. So for example, the bracket two, three, that would mean that if you start at any given point here, I want you to move from that point two distances to the right and three distances up. And this movement from here to here that is the vector 2, 3. And so vectors are used when you want to describe movement or direction, as well as talking about how far you're moving. Uh, if you take a physics class, they'll tell you the definition of a vector is something that has magnitude and direction. So that means, you know, if you just say I'm going to travel east, that's not enough information that would not count as a vector. But if you say I'm going to travel east 10 miles, that would be considered a vector in a physics class. Now, once we have these vectors here, we can do things. For example, we can add vectors. And let's say I add the vector 2, 3 plus the vector 5, negative 1. It turns out adding vectors is as straightforward as you could hope for. All we are going to do is add the first numbers together and then add the second numbers together. And this would then be the result of adding those two vectors. Now, adding vectors, what it corresponds to in a graphical situation is if you have the vector two, three, and then you were to draw the vector five, negative one, starting at the end of the first vector, then the result, or it's actually called the resultant vector, this would be the vector 7, 2. And so the way you can think about adding vectors is that you are starting at a point, you are moving in the direction indicated by the first vector, and then after you get to your new spot, you are then taking that and moving further into the direction of the second vector. And if you look at your overall trip from start to end, that's what you get when you add the vectors together. So it's very uh, simple way of understanding that adding vectors is just by, you know, doing the directions one after another. That's all there is to adding vectors here. You can also subtract vectors and subtract vectors Again, it's as nice as you'd want it to be. You just subtract the first numbers, 2 minus 5. Subtract the second numbers, 3 minus negative 1 makes it 4. And what you're going to do in this, if you want to visualize it, is you are just going to say, okay, first travel 2, 3, and then travel the opposite of the second one. So instead of going you know, five negative one there, you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna travel the opposite direction of that, which would be negative five, positive one, and then you get your resultant vector there. So when we're trying to add these vectors together, we can do it entirely graphically. And I do think it's important to understand what's happening geometrically on these problems, but when you're doing practical, you just want to add vectors together. It's just easiest to add or subtract the numbers. You, know, you already have it in a nice format there. There is something else you can do with these vectors as well. 
This is called scalar multiplication. Now, what scalars are, these are numbers that don't have a direction. So this is like five, and that's just it. That's a scalar here. So it's different than a vector. But it turns out you can multiply a vector by a scalar. So let's suppose I wanted to do uh, two times the vector two, three. Again, it's about as nice as you could hope for. You distribute that number in and you get four, six. And what this means in terms of graphically is if you look at the vector two, three, if you then just extend it to be in the same direction but twice as long, that's what you'd get for two times two, three. So again, multiplying by a number just means to extend it that many times longer. If you had a fraction, let's say one half times that, it means you only go half as long. If you have a negative number, it does mean to flip the direction back the other way. Otherwise, it's the same process here. So this is great for things that are two dimensional. Uh, a lot of times when you start a physics class, the beginning, you know, say freshman, sophomore level, they usually assume everything is going to be in two dimensional, moving in, in you know, in two d degrees of freedom there. And that's it because the problems are easier to handle than, than, you know, what are normal, like three dimensional problems. And there are also other situations where people like to do two dimensional problems. Uh, you can think of, say, some of the older video games and some newer ones, like say the original Super Mario Brothers. If you think about that, you can move left and right, or you can jump up and down, but that's it. There's no third uh, direction to travel in. And so that would be a two dimensional video game. And when they were creating that video game, they needed to understand the things that are in this video right here. Otherwise they couldn't have made the video game work properly. Now moving on, if you think to say a lot more modern day video games, or you can just look around the real world, we are usually working in three dimensional space here, which we write that as R3 here. And so the way that's going to work is you're going to have three different axes now, not just two. We are also usually going to draw it differently here, although drawing these things is not really a significant part of this class. And this axis that's, you know, it looks like it's diagonal, but it's really coming out of the paper. We just can't draw it properly because the paper itself is flat. It's two dimensional. But we can still at least idea here, and that's one coming out as X, and this is Y, and then Z is the one that's going up and down here. And this is drawn following what's called the right hand rule, which we will actually see again. And so for right hand rule, that means that if you take your fingers on your right hand, and you push them straight out, and you face them in the direction of your X axis, and then you curl them, curl your fingers in the direction of the Y axis, then whichever direction your thumb would point when it goes straight out is going to be the Z direction. Now it's pretty hard for me to do that in this video, so I'm not going to try, but if you want to, you can probably look up in, in a, a book or a, look maybe a different YouTube video where they show you how the right hand rule works graphically. And the only real difference now is that when we have this vector here, it's going to have an X, Y, and a Z component. Otherwise, things are going to work basically the exact same as they were working in R2. If I want to add the vectors 1, 2, 3, plus 4, 5, 6, I can just add the individual components. Or I could draw both of them in three dimensions and try to line them up and then look at what you'd get if you did both movements in a row. Probably not something I really want to do. I'm not very good at drawing in 3D. But regardless, you have addition, you can do subtraction. And again, it's done the exact way you'd hope for. You can do scalar multiplication. And so on. 
all these things here, they just give you a, a new type of object that you can play around with in math. And you can play around with and see what properties they have. For example, if you are adding two vectors together and you change and you write the other vector down first instead of second, turns out the answer is going to be the exact same. That's the commutative property. Of course, the commutative property would not work for when you're subtracting vectors. So these are just different things you can play around with. There isn't that much to worry about right now. It's just an introduction. But what we're going to be doing next is we're going to look at other things that are out there that have similar properties, and we're going to call them vector spaces. But for right now, this is it for R2 and R3.